folks. This is Dr. Emily Sterning with American Resiliency. It's time for an update to our UK outlook. As you may be aware, things are getting pretty weird. In the event of phase change in the world's oceans, or just to be local to the UK, if we see AMOC collapse, the UK is looking at a very different climate scenario than standard warming models. In the event of AMOC collapse, we're talking about what a British friend of mine described as a two jumper scenario, really quite extreme cold season change. Today, we're gonna look at your complete change spread, looking at our fairly near term climate future. We're gonna examine AMOC up and AMOC down two C scenarios. That's a temperature point that's likely to be reached within 10 years, according to incoming Earth Systems data. As we get moving, we're gonna be starting towards the north. A special thank you to longtime AR community member, David. We're gonna take a look at Edinburgh uh, first to give you the information you need. And as a baseline, before we explore the freaky outy level of cold you might experience by 2030, Let's look at the coastline. This website here, coastal.climatecentral.org, is a fabulous global resource. And I want you to see the level of granularity it possesses. Check this out. So I'm already zoomed in a bit here on the Edinburgh Harbor, but check it out. There is very intense address level, street level detail. And you can see this level of detail anywhere in the world using this tool. I checked it out with a friend of mine from Lincolnshire who was comforted to see that his preferred fish and chip shop was above that red line that indicates inundation, although the kebab place was not so lucky. So as you could see from that close detail and zooming back out here at one meter of sea level rise, which is less than we expect long-term with the changes we see currently occurring in earth systems, the North looks fairly resilient. Ireland, you also look pretty sound on this factor. But as you can see, even from this high level view, things don't look so good as we head south. And let's zoom in on London for a second. You can see here, sea level rise is likely to mess up quite a bit of London real estate directly, even at one meter of sea level rise. And looking a bit north of London at these large areas, which I'm told have quite some history of marshiness, but there's a lot of tiling that has brought them up above sea level and dried them out now. By one meter of sea level rise, we do expect to return up the sea. I think it's worth keeping an eye on sea level rise risk as a baseline, because that's a problem you're going to need to deal with either way, regardless of the climate scenarios we're going to be looking at in just a moment. Let's get back to Scotland in another tool. So this website is the fabulous amoxscenarios.org. And we had just been talking about the ocean, right? So let's check out sea ice cover zoomed out a bit so that you could see sort of a fuller picture. That's the blue, the sea ice up there, white, no sea ice. If we were looking at 2C of global warming with AMOC staying, we would see a retreat of sea ice. And I think many of us expect that. But if we see AMOC turn off, if we see AMOC collapse, what is this crazy crap? Here, we're gonna zoom in. You can see that Edinburgh, and the north of Scotland and most of this western coast of the UK would be looking at sea ice touching the coast. Ireland, I'd like to point out that you are hiding safely below the ice zone. All right, so that's pretty crazy. That should be a premonition of the level of cold we're talking about. Let's drop a pin on Edinburgh by clicking on the map and look at some other factors. And you'll notice that dropping the pin on the map let us see verbally Edinburgh has sea ice with a little more information here that sea ice covered during March, the furthest extent would probably extend into the harbor there. But let's look at another terrifying factor. How cold is it gonna be? Let's look at December, January, February temperature average. We can see in a pre-industrial climate, you were talking about averages slightly above zero. If we were looking at two sea of warming with normal AMOC functioning, that would have increased substantially. That's a big winter lift. With collapsed AMOC, the drop is also quite serious, looking at a colder winter than you had as a pre-industrial baseline, well below freezing. I think it's very important that we also look at cold extreme events. In the event of a collapsed AMOC, Embra is going to be looking at almost negative 30 C as an estimated cold peak in a big polar vortex, cold extreme event. 
that is substantially colder than cold extremes of a pre-industrial baseline. That's pretty ferocious. And here, I'm taking the pin off of Edinburgh, and we're going to look up here at the coast. Minus 32. So we're really talking about intense cold and a major change. Okay, so the first time I saw that, I'm going to tell you the truth. For a moment, I was really scared for you because the change in those numbers is so intense. But then I had a thought. You know, I'm an American, so even as a scientist, I'm mostly exposed to degrees F rather than degrees C. I went over to my part of the world to check out a hunch, and it turned out to be accurate. In these projections, your AMOC down winter conditions for extreme events, they look almost as bad as the winters we regularly experience in my home area. I want to point this out to you because although these conditions are pretty extreme, extreme cold, of course, they are survivable. I grew up in Chicago. There, during winter extreme events, we light the train tracks on fire to warm them up a bit so the trains can keep running. Extreme cold, you need to be keeping people safe. But before you fully freak out about these projected conditions, I do think it's grounding to know that a contemporary major metro is already as awful as you may become. All right, back to Scotland to look at the summer of it. Instead of an increase from baseline, going from a summer average of 12.5C to 16.9C, which is a pretty big jump, in the event of collapsed AMONC by 2C, you would see a projected dip in summer temperatures. An average summer temperature of 9.3C, a really very cool summer, and looking up towards the coast, where we saw that further intensification of winter lows and winter extreme events, you can see we're talking about quite a cold summer, average of 5.4 C for the summer temperatures up by the northern coast. And I wonder how different these numbers are for London than for Edinburgh. Let's jump down there. All right, London in winter. And please remember, London is looking quite wet, looking a bit floody in this scenario as a baseline, right? We saw that in the first bit, in that first instrument we looked at in this video. With AMOC collapse, instead of a much warmer winter with London averages projected to rise towards 2C from 5.1 to 9.1C, with collapsed AMOC, you're staying above freezing, but it would drop from a pre-industrial average of 5.1C to 1.9C. Much chillier in the winter. And your cold extreme events, well, not the terrifying minus 30s that we saw up in the north, is still quite cold, projected to be substantially colder than your pre-industrial baseline of winters, where you would get a cold wave that would take you well below freezing. Now we're talking about well below freezing, nearly negative 20 C. I have to say, London, coming from an area where we see that cold rather regularly, that that is a killing cold. That is a cold where you need to be protecting the population. If we are indeed seeing signs of AMOC collapse in the world's oceans, you can see that in London, we're not looking at as big of a summer drop as we saw in Edinburgh. You're looking at a mild reduction in summers from your pre-industrial baseline. Instead of increasingly uncomfortable average summer heat, it also reduces the strength of your heat waves. Your pre-industrial average heat wave in London was 31.4 C. It was looking at getting over 34 with AMOC up. With AMOC down, it's still a slight increase at 32.5 versus 31.4 but I'll take it. Any degree less that we can knock off a heat wave, that matters. As we continue to compare this north and south population centers, let's go up to Edinburgh on the extreme heat factor. And we can see that there, because of that extreme cooling that we're projecting towards the north in the event of AMOC collapse, here we are seeing an actual reduction in heat wave intensity for Edinburgh versus pre-industrial norms. So as we look here throughout the UK and Ireland, we're really looking at overall a greater range of extremes, regardless of scenario, as we move into this challenging future. I want to take just a moment. We've looked at the northern coast of Scotland a bit. We've looked at London a bit. We've looked at Edinburgh. 
Let's take a few minutes to look at Dublin and Liverpool to give us a few more points on this change spread. Ireland, I feel unable to ignore you when you're right on the screen there. I've got a pin dropped in Dublin. You can see that at 2C with AMOC on, you would have had pretty substantial winter warming. Uh, winter average temperatures of 8.6 versus 4.1C. In a collapsed AMOX, the winter is going to be substantially colder with lows below freezing. In cold extreme events, hitting negative 22.3C. Another situation where you're going to want to layer up. That is an extreme cold and extreme change from baseline winter extreme events. Looking at summers, you had been talking about an average summer temperature getting up to 18.1 in an AMOX on scenario. If AMOX should collapse, we're talking about a two degree drop in your summer average temperatures from a pre industrial baseline. And in terms of warm extreme events, you're not looking at too big of a change. With AMOC down, you're going from a typical heat wave high of 26.9 C to 27.4 C. Not too scary on the heat wave front. And let me tell you, that's not true worldwide. So Dublin, we had 27.4 as a heat wave peak. Just going across the water to Liverpool, we can see a much warmer projection. 31 C as a heat wave peak. That's a similar climb from a 30.2 C pre-industrial average heat wave peak. We can see that in Liverpool, the average temperatures are going to be dropping a little bit in the summer with collapsed AMOC, as opposed to increasing heading up towards 20 C. And rather than a meaningful increase in winter temperatures with collapsed AMOC, you would be dropping below freezing for your baseline temperature in the December, January, February average in Liverpool, bringing you below freezing as an average temperature. And zooming out for everyone who wasn't mentioned, and I know there are a lot of special places that I didn't mention here, you can see that compared to global averages, we're talking about a fairly limiting climb, fairly limited range of change across your whole island group here with the most extreme change impacting the northern coast. Looking at both summer average temperature and winter average temperature, you can really see the line where the extreme cold hits and that there are a lot of colors on the map that are not appearing up here by the UK and Ireland. So overall, as you saw there, we're talking about both more extreme cold and more extreme heat in this challenging future we're facing. You're going to want an environment that is built for that to keep people safe. Housing and infrastructure that can handle extreme heat as well as extreme cold. People know how to do it. I know we do because, again, I come from the American Midwest, a land of natural extremes where, please note, not only do we need to light our infrastructure on fire at times for therapeutic purposes, our heat wave peaks were always over 40 C. Across the UK and Ireland, although we're seeing different temperature conditions than in the past, with bigger temperature extremes and more potentially quite dangerous cold, I'm happy to say I don't see the kind of quite dangerous extreme heat emerging in any of the scenarios we're examining today. Looking south of you, whether AMOC stays up or goes down, we're talking about heat waves that are 40C and looking down to Spain, we see large parts of Spain with AMOC on heat waves over 45. They dip slightly below 45 with AMOC off, but are still dangerously high, really extreme heat projected for much of the continent. The UK and Ireland are spared some of the most extreme heat waves in either future scenario. When you're talking about heat waves over 45C, that's very dangerous. It's harder to project the population from that kind of extreme heat than it is to protect people from cold. And at 45C, you're starting to push the limits for even many heat adapted plants. You're really looking at serious potential landscape change from mass die off events, mass stress events on the landscape. So we've talked about temperature a lot here, and I'm sure you want to know about not just temperature, but also precipitation. Unfortunately, we don't have any precipitation factors on this instrument we've been using here, amoxscenarios.org, but let me show you what information I do have. 
So I know that we've been a bit spoiled by that granularity in the previous two instruments that we looked at. This is a still image from a paper that I often use. The citation will be in the video description if you want to check it out. And thanks to the generosity of Toshetto, one of the authors, this paper is freely available. Use this paper frequently and the temperature changes modeled in this paper have been consistent with the more sophisticated integrating modeling we just explored at amoxscenarios.org, even though it is an older paper. In precipitation here, we can see projections for an overall drought trend looking most severe in northern Scotland, that area that was most severely impacted in all of the cold type factors we've explored so far. We a lot of agricultural news, and I've heard that you all have been getting just hammered by highly variable precipitation in the UK. A year of drought followed by a year of deluge. Even though a drought trend is not what most of us who live in green country would like to see, at this point, I feel like whichever direction things wanted to even out, if it did want to pick a direction, Maybe we could adapt better if things were just going nuts in one direction. Overall, for the UK, for Ireland as well, this is a challenging outlook and no mistake. When you're talking about change from baseline, when you see that sea ice coming in, it's quite easy to get freaked out. I certainly did when I first examined these scenarios. But examining them further and spending more time working the problem let me realize that there was a climate analog, a place where people live today that's rather like those projected UK conditions. Realizing that your near-term climate future is rather like it is at my house now has given me a different perspective on the problem you're facing. You're looking at a serious problem, a big change. The northern coast of Scotland in particular is looking super cold, super dry, weirdly covered in ice. But even though this is a serious problem, a challenging future to face, it is a future we can face. It is a future where a fight is possible, where changes could be made to keep people in their homes. And for the UK, I have to say again, I'm glad of what I don't see. I was very grateful not to see 40C plus heat waves emerging in the UK at 2C. I want you to know that by 4C, when we really do expect AMOC to be down, even in the warmest parts of the UK, we're not looking at 40C heat waves. The UK looks to be spared from those very extreme heat waves. Solving for serious cold in a time when most people in the UK are experiencing our changing climate through uncomfortable summer heat is a tough sell, especially politically. But you don't have to wait for top-down solutions to protect yourself. From the ground up, you can do things to prepare for cold on the individual, household, and community level. Work on improving insulation, having community warming centers, backup heating plans, and lay in some serious winter gear. You may not need to go to this level, which is what Midwestern postal carriers wear in extreme cold. You're talking minus 30 C cold, minus 40 C cold. But this is a level of cold protection that's commercially available. If you feel like minus 30 C, there's just not enough jumpers to handle that. In closing, thanks for spending some time learning with me. I hope that this has given you a grounded look at some of the risks spread you all are facing in our fairly near-term climate future in the next 10 years so you can build your understanding and respond to change. You know, there are parts of the world that are looking at conditions that would be difficult to survive because they're pushing the biological limits of heat. Well, your change spread in the UK and Ireland is ridiculous. Those AMOC impacts are particularly huge, you know, at your location. It's like ground zero for this northern hemisphere cold change. But although the change is intense, you're still talking about a level of change where a ground up response is possible. If you need any tips about how to winterize your pipes, that kind of crazy cold adaptation thing, look at what people do in Chicago or in Minneapolis. Things in this world are pretty serious right now, but there are many people out there whose greatest impulse is still to help each other. I'm wishing you all the best, and I hope that I'll be able to provide you with more information on projected precipitation with better detail soon.